Today I'd like to share with you one of those medical mysteries that have recently uh, been resolved. And what we're talking about is the whole question of how the bone marrow, so let's uh, draw the bone marrow here. The bone marrow, as you know, is the factory of blood. So how the bone marrow can actually affect uh, the absorption of ingredients that will help with production of red blood cells. So the ingredient we're talking about here today specifically is iron. And I'd like to take you back uh, to the duodenal cell. So this is a cell in the duodenum. Um, and let's say this side here is now the luminal side. This is where the food comes in. And the side, on the, let's make it red here. So here on this side, you'll find this is the blood vessel where um, the iron will be absorbed into. So normally what would happen is iron would move from the, GI, the, the intestine through the duodenal cell. And there are some mechanisms here that I'm not going to go into now. And then through a door. And this door here, I call it a door because it's literally called ferroportin. Ferro, it's two R's. Ferroportin. Okay, so it's one word, ferroportin. And ferroportin literally means iron door. And the iron will move through the ferroportin into the bloodstream. And inside the bloodstream, the iron will be carried away by these molecules called transferrin. You can hear the word transport in transferrin, and the ferrin refers to iron, so the iron transporters. But this is not really what we're going to talk about today. What I'd like you to focus on for a second is this molecule ferroportin. Now, what was discovered only a few years ago is that the number of iron doors on the surface, because there are many of them, let's just draw a few. So on the surface of the cell, um, there are a number of these, many of these iron doors through which iron can get into the bloodstream. And the number of these doors are regulated by a particular hormone. And this hormone is called hepcidin or hepcidin. Some people would call it hep, hepcidin. I'm just going to write it there, hepcidin. Now hepcidin is produced, as you may have guessed, in the liver. The hep refers to hepar, which refers to the liver. The reason why it's called hepcidin is because it was first known as a molecule that kills microbes. Cidin referring to that effect of killing microbes. So hepcidin produced in the liver. And what the hepcidin does, it's, um, I usually tell my students, you know, this is like a, a key. Hepcidin is almost like a key in this case, a key that only locks. And hepcidin will go and lock ferroportin. So let's just say that little, these dots that I show here uh, represent hepcidin. And as the hepcidin binds to um, the ferroportins, the ferroportins are internalized. So the doors are moved away from this, this uh, blood vessel surface of the cell to the inside. So now the ferroportins are sitting on the inside and they're not available for iron to move through into the bloodstream. All right, so this means, and let me quickly make a little note here at the bottom, that if hepcidin, let's just hepcidin, increases, you can already see many of these ferroportins will be blocked and internalized. So that will mean that the ferroportin will then, ferroportin, I'm just going to write it like that, will decrease. And that means that iron absorption will also decrease. And exactly the opposite. If hepcidin is decreased, then the ferroportin will be increased and iron absorption will be increased as well. Now, 
If you remember your physiology, you will realize that the body cannot increase iron excretion. The only place to regulate iron metabolism is at this level of absorption. And one of the big questions has always been, uh, is it possible for the bone marrow to regulate iron absorption? In other words, let's say in times of increased need. So for instance, let us say that you would, um, the patient would bleed, okay? Needless to say, the patient is losing red blood cells and would need some more red blood cells uh, produced. Or let's say you give the patient erythropoietin. So you stimulate the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Is the bone marrow able to send the signal back to the duodenum to increase iron absorption? Well, the answer was not that clear before, but now uh, some discoveries from Dr. Kautz and the lab of Thomas Guns at UCLA in Los Angeles have shed some light on this whole issue. And this is very, very interesting. So they've done some studies in mice where they've shown that if mice, if these mice would either bleed or be stimulated by erythropoietin, then the erythroblasts, now let me just draw here. You may remember that during the development of the red blood cell, it will go through different phases where you have different cells that develop and become you know as they become mature eventually lose their nuclei and then finally the red blood cells have this sort of biconcave shape now what they have found that in situations of bleeding or erythropoietin stimulation the erythroblast here starts producing a molecule called let me write it up here this is going to be important for the future. Erythro, you can see that refers to red cells already. Erythro, meaning red. Ferron, here we're back to the iron. So this is a connection between red blood cell production and iron. And the connection is this. This precursor cell, the erythroblast, erythroblast, will start producing erythroferone, okay, so they abbreviate this as ERFE. This is a preliminary name, but this is what it is called at present. And the e erythroferone will then move to the liver and basically decrease hepcidin production. Now, now you can already see what will happen. If the hepcidin production is decreased, ferroportin will increase and iron absorption will increase as well. So this is a, basically the, one of the missing links in this whole process was this erythroferone. And uh, through this erythroferone, you can then decrease hepcidin, increase ferroportin and increase iron absorption. And the iron that is absorbed can now move back through the bloodstream to the bone marrow where it can be used for uh, increasing red blood cell production.